Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. So you've all asked me to review this bike and now it's here. The Tiger 900 Rally, or its cousin the Rally Pro, is a very premium, high-end, mid-size adventure bike with some really cool distinct features. I've spent the last few weeks riding this bike on the highway and off-road to figure out where it fits into the adventure marketplace. If you're looking for another quick press junket, press intro type review, this isn't it. We're going to dive deep and here's how I'm going to break down this review. First we're going to look at the pricing, the different models and the specs of the bike, then I'm going to give you a tour of all its cool features and tech, then we're going to talk about its off-road performance, then we'll talk about its on-road performance, then we'll discuss briefly how it compares to its direct competition, and then we'll end with some final thoughts. So before we go any further, I just want to mention that I have two new ways you can help support this channel, Big Rock Moto. The first thing is you can shop for your parts and riding gear at Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Uh, I think they're one of the best motorcycle retailers on the planet, and it's why I've chosen to go with them for an affiliate program. So please consider doing that. You can click on the link and then buy anything on their site and a small percentage supports the channel. The other thing you can do is that you've all been asking for merchandise. So polo shirts, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, water bottles, masks, everything like that. There's a link right below in the description where you can find that. So the Tiger 900 comes in a lot of different flavors and we're not even going to get into the 850 models which are kind of a detuned version of this. So let's stick to the 900. The 900 you've got two road going versions. You've got the GT and the GT Pro. The difference with those models is they use a smaller 19 inch front wheel and they use cast wheels instead of spoke wheels and also the suspension is a lot lower. The bike is lower to the ground and it's set up for street riding. For off-road riding, you've got the Rally, which is the bike you see here, and then for about $1,700 US dollars more, you've got the Rally Pro. So the pricing works out like this. In US dollars, this bike is $15,400, and the Rally Pro is $17,100. So here's how the features break down between this bike, this Rally, and the Rally Pro. Let's run through this real quick. Both bikes use the same chassis, the same 34-inch seat height, the same 5.3-gallon tank, the same Showa fully adjustable suspension with over 9 inches of travel, the same T-plane three-cylinder engine. They both have an IMU or inertial measurement unit for advanced ABS and traction control. They both have this beautiful large TFT dash. They both have heated grips. They both have tubeless spoke wheels. And they both have these amazing Brembo Stylema brakes. When you go up to the Rally Pro, it adds quite a few things on top of this Rally. So let's list what those are right here, right now. So the Rally Pro adds two more riding modes, the Rally Pro mode and a rider custom mode. It adds a quick shifter, fog lights, engine bars, a skid plate, heated seats for rider and passenger, a tire pressure monitoring system, and lighted switch gear. So if you look at all that, in my opinion, the Rally Pro probably is worth uh, for, to get all that extra equipment from the factory, the extra $1,700. So I think most people are probably going to look at that model if they want um, the Tiger 900 Rally. They're just going to go right to the Pro. However, do be aware that if you buy the Rally Pro, you're probably going to have to throw away the original skid plate and the original engine bars unless you're just interested in the cosmetics of those items because um, riders have reported that they're just too weak for off-road riding. So you're going to have to go to a stronger aftermarket replacement. We're not doing a deep dive into all the specs because I can put that below and you can find that in other articles and other reviews or look it up on Triumph's website. But I do want to mention the weight. So the Tiger 900 Rally Pro comes in around 
500 pound mark wet, ready to ride. Now that is about the same as the updated Africa Twin 1100. So it's pretty comparable to that. And it puts it along with the Africa Twin about halfway between the 450 pound Tenere 700 and the 545 pound BMW R1250 GS. So it slots right between those two in terms of weight. So like I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I'm going to be dropping all bikes in a careful way, um, obviously, and then lifting them up and give you a drop score rating. So I've established the ratings on a lot of different bikes, so let's go ahead and do that here with the Tiger. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a drop score. I would say it's easier than the Tenere 700. It's about similar to something like an Africa Twin, so we'll put the score here. So let's start our tour of all the features here at the front of the bike. So starting with the wheels, the Rally and the Rally Pro both use a 21 inch and 18 inch rear wheel. They use a tubeless spoke design, which is very similar to BMW. How will these hold up over time? We don't know yet, but the BMW rims have been pretty durable and hopefully these will too. Um, tubeless has a lot of advantages, but we're gonna have to go into that in a different video. Let's talk about the suspension and the brakes. So the suspension is made by Showa and it's fully adjustable for compression, rebound, and preload. And it's a very good suspension, but we'll talk about that more in the off-road um, segment. The brakes, they use large twin discs up front and they use these extremely powerful and extremely high-end Brembo Styling McCalipers. So the braking power on this bike is truly excellent. And it's one of the only bikes I've ridden recently where I thought, you know what, the brakes on this are pretty much as good as my BMW GS, which is saying quite a bit. Moving up here, looking at the headlight, uh, you've got also this beak here in the front. The headlight is LED, high and low beam. The turn signals are also LED, which is very, very nice. Then you've got the plastic hand guards, which are really just for cosmetics or blocking wind, but if you're gonna go off-road, you're gonna need to replace those with a metal hand guard. So let's look at the dashboard, the controls, and everything on the front of this Tiger 900. So the first thing I wanna point out, I love the way they did the adjustable windshield. You can simply um, reach for this bar, push it slightly forward, and it slides up and down. Very, very good implementation there, and you can do it while you're riding very easily. The dashboard is this beautiful, big, colorful TFT display with a lot of different customization. Uh, you can go in and change the colors, you can change the lighting. It changes lighting, obviously, from day to night, but you can configure how bright you want each mode. Um, it's very legible, it's relatively easy to control. So speaking of controls, the handlebar controls here, um, one thing, one minor nitpick I have is the joystick controller, the four-way joystick controller. Um, is it looks and feels kind of like the turn signal button so a lot of times when i'm trying to use my turn signal i end up using the joystick but that's something you would get used to uh, heated grips are integrated here the heated grips are not warm enough that's one small complaint i have cruise control buttons you've got buttons on the front here if you have the rally pro model uh, you're going to have the heated seat and also the fog lights um, but on so it's interesting that the rally still has these buttons but they're not connected to anything uh, the handlebars themselves, um, some other reviewers have mentioned this, but they're very flat and you lean forward slightly when you're on the highway, but for standing up off-road, they're an excellent uh, band on the handlebar. You've got your uh, fork adjusters here for your compression and rebound settings. Uh, you've got the three-way kill switch, a home button, a um, hazard light flasher. The levers I meant to, I should have mentioned are adjustable, so you can adjust both the reach on both of the levers. And then the mirrors work very, very well. They're a large mirror, they stick out beyond your shoulders and they do a great job of doing what a mirror should do. Uh, the key is right here, very easy to reach and the gas cap opens just how you would expect it to. So I think that's kind of the tour for this front part. Moving around here to the side of the bike, there's a few things I wanna point out. On previous Tigers, the owners complained bitterly that you could not remove the passenger uh, foot pegs and they would somehow bend the frame and not be replaceable, so they fixed that, these bolt on now. They've also made the, the frame two-piece, so it's a removable subframe. So if you're to damage your rear frame, you can easily uh, bolt on a new one. So that's a nice thing there. It shows that they're really listening to their customers. Um, of course, talking about the engine, we'll talk about more how the engine kind of runs in the off-road and on-road driving sections. Um, but they have changed the engine a lot. It has a totally different character than the old triple, which could be good or bad depending on your perspective. You get really good ground clearance, almost on par with the KTM 790 and 890 Adventure, and definitely more than the Tenere 700, which is kind of surprising, because the engine is actually uh, more compact than the engine on the T7 or shorter. 
Let's talk about the seating on the bike. I found the stock seat to be one of the most comfortable stock seats I've tested in recent memory. It's very flat, it's very supportive, and they have a very nice quality foam in it. Uh, this bike does not have the heated seats, but I would imagine that the heated seats are a similar shape and contour to these seats on this bike. You can also adjust the driver's seat up and down by about an inch. I've been running it in the low position, which gives you somewhere around a 33 inch seat height, and that's very, very nice for newer riders or riders maybe under five foot nine, five foot eight, around that uh, to reach the ground better than some of those really high adventure bikes. So I really appreciate the seating on the Tiger. Also, all these Tigers come with passenger grab handles and a rear cargo rack, unlike the Honda Africa Twin, which is something I complained about in the Africa Twin review. Let's talk about the foot pegs and the shifter. So the shifter is adjustable here. My bike does not have the quick shifter, but you have to get the Rally Pro to get that. Uh, the foot pegs are okay. They're kind of small. They're not really uh, wide enough front to back. I did remove the rubbers, which slide on, off and on really easily uh, for off-roading. So that was a nice feature, but I would still upgrade these if it was my personal bike. Coming around to the back of the Tiger, there's not too much to talk about back here. I did illuminate the turn signals here. One thing I want you to notice, the turn signals are red, and I'm very surprised to see that, but here's why they're red. Let me show you this, and this is an amazing feature that I wish more motorcycles would have. When you hit the brake, look at that. The tail, the turn signals light up as brake lights. That's a huge safety feature. And on some bikes, you have to pay a large amount of money, <coughs> BMW, to upgrade to something like that in the aftermarket. And Triumph's giving you that from the factory, and I think that's great. Um, otherwise, back here, you've got the exhaust, which seems to be a nice, high-quality exhaust, um, license plate, and a LED tail light. Let's talk about the on-road performance and experience riding the Tiger 900 Rally. So the overall experience of riding the Tiger on the road is one of refinement and comfort and poise and power as well. So let's talk about this. So comfort. Uh, I mentioned the seat is very, very comfortable. Uh, the handlebars are in a good position. You are in a slight forward lean, a little more so than some adventure bikes. I think that's an okay thing and I think that you'll be pretty comfortable with that. Let's talk about the wind protection. I mentioned the windshield's very effective and because you can slide it up and down while you're riding, it improves the effect and it's just that much more. It has this vent in it and you don't get wind buffeting. This is one of the smoothest um, bikes in terms of wind flow that I've ever tested for an adventure bike. Right up there with the GS's and very, very impressed by the aerodynamics of the bike. And if you wanna do very long days touring at higher speeds, I think for an adventure bike, this is gonna be one of the best out there for that. So we need to talk about the power, the handling, and the brake. So let's start with the power first. Um, the three-cylinder engine, the, if you really liked the previous 800 engine, or if you like other Triumph three-cylinder engines, um, you might be disappointed in some ways, and here's why. The character is entirely different. It feels more like a twin cylinder. Uh, I understand the compromise that Triumph was faced with. They were faced with, okay, how do we make a better bike for off-road? How do we make the engine perform better off-road, give it more low-end and mid-range torque and power, make it gruntier, right, at the low end, um, and smooth out the power delivery? Well, they had to go to a different firing order, so they did that. But what happened was it took away some of the growl, some of the scream, and some of the unique character that the old three-cylinder engine had. So if you're a previous, if you're an owner of the older Tiger, definitely test ride this to make sure that that's not going to be a deal breaker for you. But if you're somebody who wants to take this bike off road, as compared to the old Tiger, it's a world difference. It's so much better for, as an adventure bike engine than the old three cylinder was. The bike makes around 100 horsepower and it's plenty of power. It feels about the same, maybe a little faster than an Africa Twin 1100. It doesn't feel quite as fast as like a KTM 890. Um, I think it's similar to like an F850 GS but it's not up there with the big 1200 bikes, but it's a huge step up from something like a Tenere 700 on the highway. So really good power. The other thing I like about the engine, and this goes more towards the off-road segment, is how tractable it is. And it, you can lug it all the way down to like 2000 RPM in a high gear and pull away smoothly. It's very, very nice for that. Handling and brakes. The handling and brakes are really phenomenal on this bike. Uh, let's talk about the brakes. The brakes, these Stylema calipers and the way they set these brakes up, they're super powerful, but they also have really good feel. Um, one of the best brakes I've tested on an adventure bike. So really good job there. The handling, the handling is very, very uh, interesting on this bike. It depends how you set up the suspension. 
Um, when I first rode the bike, it was set up for road use and the rear end was uh, had high preload and the front preload was dropped all the way out. So the bike was kind of, um, you know, pointed down in the front, which um, makes the rake sharper and makes it handle sharper for the road. But off-road, it was very twitchy. So what I did was I set it up for the off-road. There's a dramatic difference, and this is why you need to read your manual and understand suspension basics. There's a dramatic difference in changing the preload settings and the other qualities of the suspension on this bike. So if you're a performance-oriented rider, just know that you really need to read the manual and you need to set things up for how you're gonna be riding because it makes a dramatic difference in how this bike handles. But when it's set up well, it will carve the twisties with the best of them. And when it's set up for off-road, it'll also be really good off-road. Some testers have mentioned vibration at higher RPM. Um, I don't agree with that. Like, sure, it, like above 7,000 RPM, which would be like probably 110 miles an hour in top gear, there's a little bit of vibration coming through. But I don't think you're going to be sitting on 110 miles per hour very often unless you commute on the Autobahn every day, in which case get a bigger engine bike, right? Um, but I don't agree with the vibration part. It's not quite as creamy smooth as the old three-cylinder, but it doesn't have many vibes either. All right, the parts we've all been waiting for, the off-road performance. So how does this bike feel off-road? The first impression that I got when riding it off-road, the first thing I noticed was how compliant and how plush the suspension is. It's extremely active in both the fork and the shock. It really absorbs chatter, uh, ruts, um, rocks, things like that very, very well. So it's very comfortable to ride off-road. It has a nice absorbent ride. But like pretty much every other modern adventure bike, maybe with the exception of the 790s and the 890s, the suspension, the spring rates are still pretty soft. So if you hit stuff hard, um, you're gonna bottom it out. It's not quite as soft as that Africa Twin I was testing, um, but it's not like, race level suspension, but you shouldn't expect that. They have to build it in a way that's going to be comfortable for the average person. The next thing I noticed was that this bike, it definitely feels uh, smaller than something like a 1200 GS or a Super Tenere or one of those big bikes. Um, but interestingly, like comparing it to my Tenere 700, it doesn't feel that much bigger or heavier than the Tenere 700. This bike seems to carry its weight a little bit lower and I actually did some measurements. The gas tank sits lower and the engine sits lower than on my Tenere 700. So surprisingly, even though it's about 50 pounds heavier and it should be heavier with all the extra tech and stuff that it has, it doesn't feel that much bigger off-road um, than something like the T7. So that's gonna be an interesting point as we reach the conclusion of this video. I've talked about the engine already, but it's a very good adventure bike engine because with the changes that they made, um, you can lug it all the way down. It's very smooth. It's a very tractable power. The traction control and ABS works really well, and you can set that up for off-roading how you like. The intervention is very smooth, so no complaints there. I mentioned the handlebars are in a very good position for standing, and that's definitely true. It's very comfortable for standing up or sitting down. So there's only a couple small little niggles I have for off-road riding. Um, one has to do with a safety requirement, I guess, but when you, the riding modes, if you're in off-road mode and you turn the bike on and off, it's gonna default back to the road mode. It gives you a shortcut to go back into that mode, but you still have to do two button presses um, to go ahead and do that. But it's not too bad and something you can live with. It's much better than trying to set up the Africa Twin with the TFT every time you start it up, which was a living nightmare. The other small little niggle I have is that the Tiger has a 24.4 degree rake, so it's a pretty steep rake angle and it doesn't quite have the stability or the ease of riding of some of the adventure bikes out there. So it's a little more twitchy in some situations. When I first got the bike, I thought, my gosh, this thing is super twitchy, but the tire pressure was way too high and the suspension was set up for the road. So it was like this and I needed to tune the suspension, adjust the tire pressure down, and then it rode more like I would expect and it was fine, but it's just a little bit twitchier if you hit like a patch of sand or loose gravel and some of the other adventure bikes. So you should keep that in mind. And by the way, I'm not the first journalist to notice that. So I, I know there's others out there that support that my opinion on that. How does the Tiger 900 compare to its competitor? So if you really look at where this sits in the marketplace as more of a premium bike, I think there's probably three main competitors. The Africa Twin 1100, the KTM 890 Adventure, and the BMW F850 GS. If you look at something like a Tenere 700, that's such a lower price point and smaller engine that it really doesn't directly compete with this, but we'll talk about that briefly as well. 
So how does it compare to the Africa Twin? This bike is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more premium than an Africa Twin. The suspension is better, the brakes are better, the handling is better, the engine feels a little bit punchier and more fun and sounds a little bit more exciting. It has that adjustable windshield, uh, the seat is better, like a lot of the components are better and it's more fun to ride, for me anyway, on and off road than the 1100 Africa Twin. However, there's a couple things that the Africa Twin has going for it. One is if you want the DCT, that's a game changing feature, it's a killer feature, I love it, and that would probably sway me towards the Africa Twin uh, to get the DCT. The other thing is the Africa Twin, it's a Honda, so it's never gonna break, it's never gonna have to go back to the dealer, and um, you know, and also the Africa Twin is a little bit better value maybe. How does it compare to KTM's 890 Adventure or Adventure R? So this is a more polished, more refined bike that gives a higher sense of quality and luxury and just overall composure. However, the KTM is an off-road ripper. It's almost like an off-road race bike. It's crazy how good those are off-road. Um, it has better balance, it has a lower center of gravity. The suspension is better on the KTM for off-roading. But on the highway and for touring, this is quieter, it's plusher, it's smoother, it has a better wind protection, it has a better seat, um, it has a similar fuel range. So for highway riding, this is going to be a bit nicer um, than the KTM is. But if you want the max, just the most maximum capability, then the KTM is going to be your cup of tea. How about the F850 GS? So I have not spent a lot of time on the F850, just a little bit test rides here and there. Um, overall, I feel like this bike here gives more of a sense of quality and refinement and high-end features than the F850 GS does. And some people are gonna disagree with me on that, um, but I think one of the reasons the F850 hasn't sold as well as BMW would like is that it doesn't quite have the high-end quality, the fit and finish, and it doesn't have a German-made engine. Um, that you would kind of expect with a BMW at that premium price. So there's a lot of things that I think the Tiger is a little bit nicer than the BMW, but without further testing on the 850 platform, uh, I can't really make a definitive conclusion. Some people like Steve Camrad have said that the BMW is a little bit more natural to ride off-road, but the Tiger is a better street bike. Uh, so, and that's probably true. How about compared to the Tenere 700, which is an unfair comparison because this is way more expensive and way more high-end. This bike is 80 or 90% as good off-road as the Tenere 700. It doesn't feel that much heavier. Um, it is a little bit larger and heavier, like if you were to get it stuck or drive it off a cliff and you had to lift it up, um, you're gonna feel those extra 50 pounds, but it handles very well. It's not quite as top heavy as the T7. It's easier to lift. Um, so I think if you don't care as much about the budget, then this is a very good choice. Also, this is a much better road bike than the Tenere 700. It's much more comfortable, better wind protection, uh, overall better touring machine. Final thoughts on Triumph's Tiger 900 Rally or Rally Pro. This bike is a total package. It delivers on its promise of being somewhere in between those big 1200 class adventure bikes and the smaller, more budget adventure bikes like the Tenere 700. Here's what I mean. It has 80 or 90% of the touring comfort, the amenities, the luxury features of something like my R1250 GS but it also has 80 or 90% of the off-road performance and the more nimble performance of something like Yamaha's Tenere 700. So if you are somebody who doesn't wanna make any compromises, who wants all of the latest tech, a super comfortable bike for long road rides on the highway, but you still wanna go pretty seriously off-road, the Triumph Tiger 900 should be very, very high on your list. You should look at those competitors that I talked about and look at other bikes, um, but it's hard to argue with how Triumph has put together this bike that seems to split the difference between just being big enough, but also not being too big or too small. I'm lucky enough to have the garage space and the capability of having the Tenere 700 and the R1250 GS Adventure, and I love both of those motorcycles. But if for any reason I needed to downsize my fleet and replace both of those adventure bikes with one adventure bike that could do everything, this would be very, very high on the list, along with bikes like Honda's Africa Twin 1100. So I'm gonna be doing something a little bit new with my videos. If you have questions, comments, discussion about the Tiger 900, put them below in the comments. And I'm gonna do a follow-up video in a couple weeks. I'm gonna answer all your questions about the bike because in a review of this length, it's just impossible for me to cover everything. So if you have questions, how does it compare to other bikes? Um, what features does it have? How does certain tech work? Uh, let me know and I will list all of those in a, in a follow-up video and answer those questions for you. Otherwise, I really appreciate your support and your patronage. Um, please do all the normal things. Subscribe, hit the bell, support me on Patreon, shop at Rocky Mountain, buy my merchandise, 
Um, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, but otherwise, ride safe. I truly appreciate all of you being along for this journey, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.